All right, everyone, welcome to the call, Forex for Beginners. I'm Tasha Hodes, and we do this call every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, for about an hour. So uh, welcome to Epic. We have fully launched the company starting October 1st. We're taking a look um, at the website here. So I trust that everyone has uh, jumped into the two-week syllabus, that you're um, attending the live and or recorded sessions. There are also study hall sessions uh, that the company offers to get more um, hands-on training. In our team, Impact um, Over Profits, that's Damo's team, we have additional courses, uh, training classes like this one. I see Mo on the line, shout out to you, Mo. Um, Mo, why don't you tell everyone about your class on Thursday? Perfect timing. Tell everyone about your markup class. Mo, can you come off mute? Hey, how's everybody today? Yeah, I, I'm on mute now. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you fine. All righty. So uh, basically, my I'm, I'm just trying to follow your lead. You know, um, basically, my, my, my class on, uh, on Thursdays are usually just uh, basic markups. You know, knowing how to understand, uh, you know, understanding how to do your market structure, you know, how to draw your support and resistance and, you know, learning, you know, your price actions and whatnot. So that way you can become your signal, you know. So just basic markups uh, when it comes to, you know, your charts and whatnot. So that's that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying awesome. to follow your lead. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So great yeah. to have you. Great to have you. Great to be here. I'm happy to be here. All right. Okay. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Forex um, for Beginners. So, yeah, we just gave just a brief intro of everything that Epic has to offer, the two-week syllabus that Coach Max has worked so hard for. Hopefully, everyone's diving into that. The live sessions, if you can't make it live, you can go to that same link in your back office and watch the recording. And the live classes are held at 8 a.m. Eastern to cover the New York session. Then we have the 9 p.m. Eastern to cover the Asian session. And then the 2 a.m. live session, which covers um, the London trading session. So no matter where you are in the world, no matter what time frame you have to trade, um, Epic has uh, live training available for you. All right. So the purpose of this class with all that um, Epic has to offer is really to help you get set up with your demo account. We recommend a demo account uh, to start your, your trading career so that you can understand how price moves. You can practice taking trades. You can practice taking the trade signals that are um, amazing um, epic traders are calling in the epic forex signals. You can practice those in your demo account. It will also help you get set up with your live account as well. So what I want to cover tonight is a topic on Bitcoin. So when you're ready for your live account and don't feel rushed, take your time. When you're ready to open up your live account, there are several ways that you can fund it. And by funded, we mean loading it with your real money that you're going to actually use to trade. And I found that using Bitcoin is one of the quickest ways to fund your account. So I know that when we say Bitcoin, you know, you may feel a little nervous because you don't know much about it. So that's the purpose of today's call to introduce you to the concept um, and show you one way that you can use Bitcoin to get into your trading account relatively quickly. So give me one second and I will share my slides. So we're gonna take it kind of slow and um, I'm specifically going to go over how to purchase Bitcoin using Cash App. Now, I know that our team members outside of the U.S. are not able to use Cash App. So in the upcoming weeks, I'll introduce you to other uh, websites where you can purchase your Bitcoin. But what I want to go over tonight is just a basic introduction of Bitcoin 
so you, that you're not afraid of it. And the steps and the concepts that we talk about, you can use with Cash App and any other um, site that will allow you to purchase um, Bitcoin. All right, so let's get started. First of all, what is it? What is Bitcoin? We've all heard about it. It's actually a cryptocurrency. So what is a cryptocurrency? It's a virtual currency, meaning you can't put your hands on it. It's a digital currency. Another word for it is online cash. So whichever of those terms helps you conceptualize Bitcoin, you can't feel it or touch it. Uh, virtual currency, digital, online cash. It was created back in 2009 and it's not controlled by the government or the banks. So it's definitely unique um, in nature. So the transactions are done without using a bank and that's what makes it so special. So let's jump right in and we'll take it uh, nice and slow. Let's say that you are in your broker account. Now, we partner with brokers when it's time to make our actual trades. We don't trade by, us, by ourselves. And after we go over this, um, for anyone who needs help setting up their demo account, we can um, walk you through those steps. But let's say that you already have your live account set up and you're in your back office for your broker, you've selected one, you've signed up, and now it's time to fund your account. So for most brokers, whether it's Hugo's Way or LQDFX, whichever broker that you're using, nine times out of 10, they will have a Bitcoin option. And you may say, well, I'm gonna be trading you know, in, in dollars if that's your currency. Don't worry, Bitcoin is only a means to get your dollars into your trading account. And for some reason, it's quicker to um, transfer your money using Bitcoin. So looking at the screen, let's say you're in your um, Hugo's Way account, for example, but this process is pretty much the same for all the brokers. So I wanna keep it kind of general. And so the screen will say deposit via Bitcoin. So let's say that you want to deposit $50 to start your live trading account. Once you input $50, then it's going to convert that to Bitcoin. So this decimal that you see here, I'll use the arrow. Let me bring it to the front. This BTC and this decimal number is the $50 converted into Bitcoin. So this is the amount of Bitcoin that you're going to transfer into your trading account that your broker will then give you credit for $50. So your goal is to put in $50. You're going to use that during Bitcoin, using Bitcoin. And this is the amount of Bitcoin that you need. So that's the first thing that I want to bring your attention to. It looks like a decimal number. It looks like a decimal with, um, you know, seven to eight to nine digits behind that decimal number. So get comfortable seeing your Bitcoin as a long decimal, okay? The second thing that's really important on this screen is the Bitcoin address. Think of it as an email address for where you're going to send your Bitcoin. So when I purchase this amount of Bitcoin, I'm going to send it to this Bitcoin address, which is a long string of characters of numbers and letters. If I send this amount of Bitcoin to this address, then that's how the money will show up in my trading account. This amount of Bitcoin, and this is my Bitcoin address. Those are the two kind of most important things here on this screen. Now, the, this QR code is actually a digital representation of this same Bitcoin address. So I know all of this, you know, may be new to you. Maybe you haven't seen it before. So I just want to introduce it to you today. So here's your Bitcoin amount. Here's your Bitcoin address. 
And here's um, a picture or a digital representation of that Bitcoin address. All right, so now I'm going to show some screens from Cash App. Now, if you have an iPhone or if you have an Android, fortunately, the screens look 99% the same, which is pretty rare for an app. Normally I need to show the Android version and the iPhone version, but fortunately um, they're about the same. So this is um, a screenshot of my cash app. Notice these icons here at the bottom. So this fourth icon to the right, that's called the investments icon. If you click on that, then at the top, you'll see stocks and you'll see Bitcoin. Click on the Bitcoin and then scroll down and you'll want to click on buy. Okay, so you can open up Cash App, whether it's um, iPhone or Android, click on the bottom, click on this investments icon, click on Bitcoin, scroll down to the bottom and click on buy. Now, once you do that, let me make the screen a little smaller. Once you do that, now you need to select, well, how much Bitcoin do you wanna buy? Okay. So you can choose these already preset amounts or you can press the three ellipses here and you can enter in a custom amount. So one thing about transferring Bitcoin from one place to another, there are fees attached with it. So if I really want $50 in my trading account, if I only purchase $50, by the time those fees are subtracted, I may only end up with 46, 47 or $48. So I'm, I normally do a little extra, maybe two or $3 to account for those extra fees. So I'm going to buy $53 worth of Bitcoin. I click next, then it wants to uh, confirm your amount and then you hit done. So that's as, easy as it as it gets for actually buying Bitcoin uh, using Cash App. Now, what I didn't show here are the setup steps for Cash App. If you're in the US and you're able to use it, when you first download it, it's going to ask you lots of questions about your identity. Um, why are you um, interested? Um, per se, in using Cash App. A lot of questions and, and people always message me and say, do I have to you know, tell my job or do I have to put my income? And I say, yes, if you want to be verified. These are the questions that Cash App asks. And then you will associate um, a debit card or your bank to it. So I'm not showing all of those setup steps. I'm just showing you how simple it can be once you've done that to actually purchase the Bitcoin. So to cover this screen again, we entered, we clicked on this ellipsis to buy Bitcoin. We selected this uh, custom amount to account for any extra fees in transferring the Bitcoin. And we confirmed our purchase. And then you're going to get this um, verification. You purchased this amount of Bitcoin. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back to my home page, And this time, because remember we used this investment icon here to buy the Bitcoin. Now we're gonna click on what I call the, the home page or the, the house icon. So when you click on that icon and you select Bitcoin, you'll have an option to deposit or withdraw. We're choosing to withdraw because we literally want to take the Bitcoin that we just bought and send it to our broker so that we can fund our trading account. 
So we use Cash App on our phone to purchase the Bitcoin. Now we're going to transfer that over to our broker so that we can put it in our trading account. So click on withdraw and it's going to tell you how much you have available. I normally uh, use, the, use the full amount just to keep things simple and you're going to click withdraw. Now, there are uh, two ways that uh, one of my brokers is Hugo's way. So when I first started using Cash App to buy my Bitcoin and send it to my broker, when I clicked on withdraw from this page, then immediately my camera icon would pop up. And so I would have, you know, I'm using my phone for Cash App and I would have my laptop computer with my broker where I initiated the deposit. And so once my camera icon came up, what I would do was have my, um, in this case, Hugo's way, it could be any broker that you're using that accepts Bitcoin. You have that up on your computer and I could literally hold my camera and take a picture of this QR code and poof, like magic, the Bitcoin was transferred in about 10 minutes. I couldn't believe it was that easy. Now, when I use Cash App to put Bitcoin, um, to transfer Bitcoin into my trading account, that camera icon isn't showing up. So what is showing up is in Cash App, it wants me to give the Bitcoin address. So it's a little bit of copy and paste. I'll tell you the way I do it. So I'm on my computer, I can click copy to copy this Bitcoin address. And then um, one thing that, one way that I do it is I um, email it to myself and then in Cash App, I open my email, put it on my clipboard. And so in Cash App, that's how I copy the Bitcoin address. A bit of, you know, clunky steps there. But it was so much easier when they let you just take a picture of the QR code. It, it was kind of fun to do it that way. So those are the steps for opening um, up your cash app, buying your Bitcoin and using your Bitcoin address to send it to your broker. And those were the, the new steps that I wanted to cover today. So the way that the, this class kind of works, I spend the first... Uh, 15, 20 minutes going over something new and or important. And then um, I'll see if there's anyone who needs help with their demo account, opening up a demo account, taking the, the trade alerts that are coming from our uh, master traders. And then we'll go straight into Q&A. You guys come off mute, ask me um, any question that you've had, um, and I'll do my best to answer. So I'm going to go in the chat. Thanks, Mo. I appreciate that. And let me, if you go to the chat, I'm going to post my YouTube site because we record all of these classes. So if there's a step that you missed, don't worry. You can go to my site. I'll have this uploaded hopefully um, by in the morning. So of the of everyone that we have in the class here, put a eight in the chat if you need help setting up your demo account, or if you need help actually entering the trade that we're getting from Epic Forex Signals. Put an eight in the chat if that's you. Don't be shy. All right, maybe everyone has already set up their demo accounts. Now I wanna switch to trading view because we cover that as well. So put a nine in the chat if you could use some assistance with the basic um, setup of trading view and how to use um, some of the basic tools. Put a nine in the chat if you could use some assistance with that. So an eight in the chat, if you need help setting up your demo account, learning how to take a trade, how to input your take profit, stop loss, lot size and finding the pair, put a nine in the chat if you're, you're past that and you're in the trading view and you have a couple of questions there. 
All right, if everyone's all set up, let's go straight to our Q&A and maybe you guys have some more intermediate questions. I will do my best to answer. I can pull up TradingView. What would you guys um, wanna talk about or what can I help you with? Yeah, can you go over how to enable chart sharing on TradingView? Absolutely, great question. So give me a second and I will share my trading view. So we'll leave the Epic website and go straight to trading view. Now what you guys, the first thing that you're noticing is probably my color scheme. So I like to show everyone that you can customize your charts. So right click on settings. I am using this nice teal blue for my up candles and I'm using this lavender purple for my down candles. So feel free to customize your chart make it your own. Something that Elise, she's one of my favorite uh, traders, what I heard her say is that she likes to choose neutral colors so that you're not biased when you look at it. You know, you can be technical, you can be objective, and an up um, candle is just as valuable as a down candle. So thought I'd throw in that tidbit. So here we are on trading view. Here is the pair that we're looking at, USD CAD, and we are on the one hour time frame. The most popular time frames used are starting with um, our top down analysis. We may look at the daily chart. We may come down to the four hour. We may drop down to the one hour. And then for our entry, we may use the 15 or five minute charts. Those are pretty much the most popular uh, time frames. So that's the daily the four hour, the one hour, and then the 15 or five minute for your entry, okay? Um, our question was, how do you share a chart? I, you know, when I first started trading over three and a half, almost four years ago, I learned using MT4 on my computer, but I did not know about TradingView at the time. Now that I know about TradingView, I hardly ever open up MT4 on my computer. So the way that I trade is I have TradingView open on my laptop so that I can have a nice big screen. And then I have MT4, which is where we actually take the trade. I have that on my phone. I love the convenience of analyzing on my big screen, but actually putting in the trade on my phone. So if I run an errand, you know, these days I'm pretty much just going to the grocery store, <laughs> you know, with the pandemic. But when I'm in Publix um, and I want to check on my trade, I can adjust my stop loss. I can adjust my TP. I can close a trade. I can enter a trade. So I love the convenience of having um, MT4 on my phone. So back to TradingView and all the neat tips and tricks that it has. Here is a camera icon. So if I click on it, it's automatically going to take a snapshot. So what you can do, click on it. There is the link. You can copy it or you can save the image. Normally what I want to do when I'm sharing a chart is I'll click copy. Then I'll come over here to Telegram and in one of the mini chats that I'm in, that's where I can share it. So I would copy it here. I could go straight to Telegram. I'm on a PC, so I would do Control V to paste it. And that's how you would share a chart. And that's really useful for the homework that we're all doing and posting um, in, the, in the main official Epic um, Trade House chat that we can share with all the traders. So great question. Are there any other questions? You guys feel free, come off mute, talk to me, let me know how it's going. Is anyone taking um, the trades in their demo account or their live account? How's that going?
So how about this? Put a five in the chat if you are taking those signals from our traders in either your demo or live account. Put a five in the chat if you are taking those signals. Awesome. Mo is. Yeah, I know I am. I love the indices and um, we know our upline uh, demo is great at that. All right, you guys are quiet tonight. We normally have lots of questions. So I will keep um, poking and prodding so that I can see where you guys need some assistance. Let me get um, a feel of the students that we have in the room. So there's one more message. Okay, Nadine says you're taking some if they match my analysis. Awesome, awesome, Nadine. That's great to hear. So understand that you know when you come to Epic, we're all coming from different places and with different goals. We have some that want to come learn how to literally copy and paste the trade and ride off into the sunset. So you will take, you'll connect to the Epic Forex signals. When a signal comes in, you put it into your phone and you set your TP one, two or three, and you are happy and content. And that is a wonderful goal to have. Then there are some that come to Epic who, yeah, I wanna take some of the signals, but maybe you also wanna learn this skill. You wanna be able to do some analysis to help you, um, like Nadine said, consider the trade and decide you know, if it matches your analysis or if you wanna take that trade. Then you have another batch of students and this is the batch that I'm in where you actually wanna become the signal. You may, I may take um, trades from the master traders, but I am probably in as many classes as I can get my hands um, on live or recorded. And my personal goal just putting it out there, I want 2021 to be my last year working. So I'm in IT. I've been in IT um, for about 20 years. My background is electrical engineering. So, and I also teach college algebra. So for some reason, all the hard subjects, I kind of gravitate to that. So my um, personal goal is to be able to quit my job in 2021. <laughs> Thanks, Zoe, and trade full time. So I love, I'll tell you, I love the charts and the technical analysis. There are different, you know, types of traders. Some um, traders, and my husband falls into this category, he loves to figure out what's going on in, in the world. Um, what news is affecting the currency in China and Japan and the yen and the euro. And he's he, that's called a fundamental trader. And so um, Jeffrey Rojas talks a lot about um, the U.S. dollar and the unemployment rate. And that's one type of trading. Then you have the technical analysis. And that's me. Thank you very much, um, Zelly. I tried. I'm the technical analysis. I love the charts. When I first learned about trend lines, and I'll show you guys tonight how well price follows trend lines, that just blew my mind. There's actually, you know, science behind the charts. They don't just move randomly. You know, we are able to do technical analysis and not just guess, but a lot of times accurately predict in a lot of cases, where price is going, when it's going to pull back, when it's going to shoot forward, when it's going to reverse. So know that there is a, a method to the madness. There is a science behind the charts. There's a lot to learn. I'm four years, almost four years in and, and still learning. But the great news is, had I had Epic first, <laughs> You know, I probably would have already uh, quit my job. So I'm so excited about the wealth of traders um, knowledge that we have access to. Awesome. Awesome. All right. All right. I see a lot of other people in the chat who want to leave their job, too. Yeah, I, I keep seeing this quote and I saw it again today. A six figure trader is two hundred and seventy five dollars a day. So I don't know how many of you all, um, is anyone trading indices? Put a, put a one in the chat if you're trading indices. 
It is, um, yeah, I hear you, Mo. I love NAS 100. I follow it all day in the New York session. So that is my goal to master it. All right, I see some other in, um, indices traders um, in the chat. All right, US 30, yeah, yeah, no no worries, Shannon. So um, 100, $150 a day, 200 is very doable. Um, with the indices at a 0 0.01 lot size. Working your way up to that. I hear you, Nadine, take your time, take your time. Germany 30, all right, Shannon, she is tricky. She is tricky, <laughs> Germany 30. <laughs> awesome, awesome, yeah. And how fortunate are we that our upline, Damo, loves trading the indices and does it so well. That was that was the reason why I, I picked him to sign up under Epic, you know, I, I love um, not only his heart, his humility, um, impact over profits, but you know the fact that he loves to trade the indices and does it so well. So yeah, we are really, really blessed. What question was I answering? I started um, <laughs> rambling and I don't even know where I was. Uh, so we covered the question about how to take a picture of the charts. Yeah, absolutely. He cares for sure, for sure. All right. Guys. Can I can I ask one question though about the sharing thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what I was saying is like basically when you enable to where others can share your can see your screen because if you don't have that enabled and then you just take a screenshot of it, mm -hmm. if others click on the link, they won't be able to see it unless you enable the sharing for. Oh, others where to is see. that, Mo? Show me where that is. Uh, Okay, so go on the top left corner where the menu is. Uh-huh. Click on that. There it is. And then you see what it says sharing, so that's yeah. not enabled. So right now, wow. if, you, if you send that link out, no one will be able to see it unless that's enabled. You learn something new every day. Thank you. That's awesome. I did not know that. Thank You're you, welcome. Mo. No problem. <laughs> Wonderful. Now we know. Hey, Perry. I see one of my team members on. That is excellent. Yeah, trading view is jam packed with with stuff. I, I I love it, and as you can see, we're we're all still learning. So, um, yeah. What so? What do you guys? Anything else you want to talk about for the next next few minutes? If it's intermediate, if it's a little bit more advanced, throw your question out. Myself or Mo will do our best um, to help you out. What do you guys um, want to know? I know there are some questions. There have to be some questions. If you're if you're actively trading and taking those um, trades, I know you have some questions. So come off mute or type it in the chat. Feel free. We are here to help. So Mo wants to know, what is my favorite pair to trade? So when I first started, um, it was USDJPY because as I worked during the day, during the evening was my um, time to trade. And so, you know, it's great to um, pick a pair that's active in the, in the, you want to pick a pair that's going to be not volatile, but really moving during that time. So during the Asian session, that's a USDJPY is a great um, pair for the Asian session. Anything that uh, has an NZD or JPY, because if you notice the pairs are correlated to their region in the country, region in the world. So your USD pairs are gonna move in New York, your euros and GBPs are gonna move in London and your um, Asia centric countries, uh, currency pairs are gonna move in Asia. So now um, I love NAS and I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was coach Max who says pick one pair you know, one to two max. And for me, with the time that I have, I love following NAS during the New York session. So if you can follow one pair and, and get to know it, that's um, a real, you'll, I think it'll boost your confidence and you can watch the way it moves. I was on Brady Clark's live this morning and he was saying how the pairs are so different. Like he favors the GBP pairs because of the amount of pips that they they pull out or push out. And then he said, you know, but if I started trading USD CAD, I'd have to, you know, understand 
how many pips it puts out, the way it moves. Some pairs are known for, you know, big or dramatic pullbacks, you know, i.e. the GBP pairs. Then you have pairs like AUD, USD that are more beginner friendly. So, yeah. Um, Nadine says, uh, oh, wow, Savvy's on. Hey, Savvy, you want to come off mute and tell us hello and talk about your class? You know, I'm going to put you on the spot. Tell us hello. I should have known. I almost didn't even comment. <laughs> I'm telling no. Mo is on. We're having a good time. Hey, hey, I, I'm having That's a great right. time. Join the party. Join have- the party. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You always have such an awesome class. So I learn everything. I learn something new every time I come to one of your classes. So thank oh, you. I- I Let me be here. You. I will be having a class on Saturday. I'm going to start posting mine probably awesome. tomorrow. Um, yeah. It's just going to be an interactive class on finding your lines on trading view, your support and resistance lines. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's what I'll be doing, but I'm just here to support today. Awesome. Awesome. So glad to have you. So glad to have you. Thanks. So Nadine is saying that what trips her out is when she looks at different time frames. And they all say different things. Mm, mm, mm. Don't I know it? One will be on an uptrend. The other will be a downtrend. Should we just pay attention to the time frame we are entering on or the higher time frame? Nadine, that is an excellent question. And I will do my best to answer it because I experienced that today in a NAS 100 trade that I was in. So... I don't want to show you an indice, but let's, so, you know, first, this is one aspect that I didn't really understand for a long time. I wish someone had to explain it to me when I first started Forex. The higher the time frame, the bigger picture or the bigger perspective that you get. So it's not that the trend is changing as you go to a lower time frame, is actually that you're getting a magnifying glass and you're taking a closer look. So the higher the time frame, the daily, the four hour, you know, it's it's actually like being in an airplane and looking at your house, you know, from thousands of thousands of feet in the air. There's certain details that you're just not gonna see, but the closer and closer you get to the ground then you can say, oh, wow, there's that. And I know, you know, there's my house and I can see the roof. So the closer, the lower the time frame, you're just getting a, a closer snapshot and way more detail. So let me give you an example. So I'm on, we're in USD CAD. There are 22 minutes left in this candle. Hopefully everyone knows what this counter means here in trading view. So if I take a square and I highlight this one candle, if I drop down to the 15 minutes, I'm going to see that same representation. However, it's going to be in four candles. So let's see. There we go. So let me narrow in the box. So notice that on the one hour, I saw one bullish candle. Remember my color coding, my blue is for my bullish movement, my candles where price is going up. But on the 15 minute, it's actually showing that there's a slight pullback happening um, right now. So if I go back to the one hour, you can see there's, um, let me zoom in. You can see there's a tiny wick at the top. So when I drop back down to the 15 minute, that wick is accounting for this slightly bearish candle. So that's a small example of what happens when you go, to lower time frames. It may look like the trend is changing, but you're actually just getting um, a, a really good screenshot. So let me see if I can give you another example. I don't know that we have any brand new beginners, so I'm gonna show you guys 
NAS and show you what I experienced um, today in one of my trades. All right, let me get rid of the trend line so that I can clean up the chart a little bit. I'll put this back. So where is that time frame? Let me go back to the hour. Yep, here it is. So I'm gonna put that trend line back so that you can see what I was seeing. At some point I noticed that price was breaking through this trend line. And trend lines are one of my favorite um, ways to trade the break of the trend line, the break and the pullback. So notice that on the one hour, and I'll zoom in, on the one hour, this break was nothing more than a wick. Okay, let me put that back in a rectangle and let me, you can right click and change the settings. So the settings of that rectangle, I'm gonna take the background out. All right, so there's my rectangle. Here is my break of this trend line, right? Now, this is what I saw on the 15 minute. Squeeze in. So what was a wick on the one hour was a full break of the trend line, a full retest, and then what I thought was a continuation of that cell. So here is a perfect example of what looks to be <laughs> what was what well it technically was a break of the trend line at the one hour however it was only a wick but on the 15 minute i got a lot more um price action right so of course i was thinking that i that price was going to continue in this cell however had i stayed on the one hour and realized that this break of the trend line was only a wick and not a full candle like this over here, then I probably would not have entered that cell. So that's an example of how all the time frames work together and that you kind of need to have a concert view. You need to look at the one hour. You can look at the 15 minute for your entry, but I've always been taught, you know, unless you're scalping, you kind of, you may want to stay on the one hour. At least I like to get the bigger moves um, on the one hour. So I wanted to give you guys that example. That Thanks, is so love. true, Tasha, because the same thing happened to me oh yesterday. Really? <laughs> it was a different pair, but the exact same thing happened to me. Really? So you wow. are so true on that. Yeah. So lesson learned, lesson learned, guys. I have a trading notebook. And so I definitely wrote that down. It's, so that's you know, an issue that I don't want to come across again. The next time I see break and retest, I'm going to, uh, at the lower time frame, I'm going to go up a time frame and see how strong that, that break of the trend line was. Savvy, good to know I'm not alone. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Nadine, for that question. Um, all right, guys, it's 6.43. Anything else you guys want to talk about as we uh, wrap up? Let's see. Um, yeah, so my goal, I so I'm, I typically trade NAS and I start um, when work allows in the New York session and I watch it. So one thing that I've learned, and this is really important for the pair or the pairs that you're following, find out when they move the most. So it used to be that me and uh, Mia, one of my team members, not only would we watch NAS in the New York session, but we would watch it um, in Asia as well. And, you know, we would be sleep during New York. But when I was looking at my trading, um, 
uh, notebook when I'm taking uh, counts of my wins and my losses, I found that I was losing a lot of trades at night. And I said, you know, I don't think I'm going to trade NAS as much as night at night. Turns out NAS um, is most volatile during the New York session. That's when you have the bigger moves. So nine times out of 10, I don't look at NAS um, in the evenings. You know, I may go to like maybe an EU or um, a UJ for um, the Asia session. But um, make sure to make the most of your chart time, make sure you're following your pair at the right time. So if I'm trading uh, Euro GBP, clearly, if I'm not a London session trader, that may not be the pair that I want to choose. Because with both of those pairs being in Europe, London is going to be when you see the most uh, volatility and the most moves. So make sure that you're, uh, the time that you have to trade, that you're picking a pair that's conducive for you. So you can get the, the most out of your, your chart time. All right, y'all. Well, if there are no other questions, I won't hold you, give you back a few more minutes. I will get this recording uploaded to my YouTube channel. It'll I be- I have a question time. if- um, Yeah, Brandon? You can hear me. Hey, Brandon, where, um, yes. where are you calling okay. from? This is new. I'm not used to being able to ask questions. Talk <laughs> I'm calling to us. from Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. I'm in Douglasville. Where are you? Really? I'm yeah. in Loganville. So about, okay, uh, North. about an hour and a half. Yep. Yeah. So welcome. I'm, welcome. I'm learning. I'm um, learning, especially the, the smart money that, that um, Domo and Elise teach. Awesome. awesome. How, Me too. how would you say what's different? What I want to do is I want to pick an index that mm -hmm. I can get really good at. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at NAS, I was looking at German 30, mm -hmm. um, U30 mm -hmm. and the SPX. How is NAS 100 different from U30? And what's your normal stop loss? How many pips do you give yourself room when you're make, making trades with NAS? Ooh, good questions, Brandon. Great questions. Here's something that I can do. And I just learned about this. If I click on the compare tool, let's add US 30. So that's US 30 in orange. Okay. And I think I can add another one. Let's add Germany 30. How's it showing up? G... Sometimes it's GEU. How do I have it? One I think it's DEU or something yes. like that. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. No problem. All right. So we got Ger Germany 30 in blue, US 30 in orange, and NAS is on the screen. Uh-oh. So let me uh, reset my chart before I mess it up. So now you can see that for the most part, they track together mm -hmm. for the most part. I have found that I don't know the exact calculation between NAS Germany and US 30, but I believe um, NAS and SBX 500 um, are the least expensive of the indices to trade. You're still- Okay, so getting... that should be the one I'm focused on. Yeah, NAS or, or SPS X 500 for sure. Mm -hmm. You still get roughly a dollar um, per point. So mm -hmm. 100 pips is 10 points at 0 0.01. That's, um, let me say that again, 100, 100 pips would be 10 points at 0 0.01. That's $10. So, you know, the good news is every time price moves a point, that's a dollar. The bad news is mm -hmm. every time price moves a point out, you know, in the opposite way of your trade, you know, you're losing right. a dollar. So the money is fast moving. How, so, what type of stop loss do you use? Because I know that um, Domo usually uses like a 500 pip yeah, which stop is, loss. Uh-huh, which is $50 at 0 0.01, right? Is that what you use for NAS as well? Or is it less because it's not as, as fast moving? It's not because the way I trade, I trade off the trend lines. So I'm, I like to fail fast. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 
I've always been taught, you know, stop loss is is dependent upon your account. So someone with right. thousands in their account can have a much steeper stop loss than someone with hundreds. So mm-hmm. it really depends on your account. I don't like to give a, you know, a hard, fast answer, but it can get expensive on a smaller account if every time you trade, you're using a 50 point or 500 pip stop loss. So you have to know your account size mm-hmm. to, to really um, answer your question because that question is going to be different depending on your, you know, how much you have to play with. Looking at um, your risk to reward and account management is a lot trickier with the indices because if you have $100 and you have a 50 point or um, 500 pip stop loss, if you lose two trades, that's your account. Right. And see, I started, before I even knew about smart money, I was, I traded NAS Mm -hmm. and I set like a a 20 pip stop loss and I went to sleep and I woke up and it was like $200 in profit and it kept coming up to one number and and just kind of staying there. So I thought that was just beginner's luck. Maybe it was a fluke because I, when they say when you have indices, you really need to have more wiggle room than that. Mm-hmm. But um, maybe that was just like an entry that was at the point where it was just a, a really strong it resistance. Off. It took off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It it took off. It's, it's not but that's not typical be. when when you're trading this pair or this index. Right. It depends on your entry. Mm-hmm. It depends on how sniper the entry, <laughs> how sniper the entry is. And, you know, we're not going for perfection here. We're going to lose trade. So yeah. we have to understand the risk with every trade. I definitely appreciate you guys um, having a extra support and study sessions. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're here every, um, every Tuesday. Mo has his markup classes um, on Thursday. What time was that Mo? Was it 7 PM Eastern? Uh, that is, that was 6 p.m. No, well, 7 p.m. Eastern. Yes. Yeah, okay. 7 p.m. for Mark. And then Savvy. Savvy, what time is your class going to be on Saturday? It's going to be 3, 3 p.m. Central. Awesome. Okay. So that's 4 p.m. Eastern. So yeah, we, we have a really good dynamic team here and we're, you know, we want everyone to win. So we are one big gigantic helping hand here to help. Anything else, Brandon? Any other questions? I love it. So awesome. Nope. Awesome. That, that answers all of my questions perfectly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Brandon, make sure you have more of those fire entries now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we're working, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, thank you, Zelly. Am I saying your name right? I hope I am. All right, y'all. Anybody else want to come off mute and talk? If not, we will, okay, great. We will um, wrap it up. We got a few more minutes. Where are, where's everyone calling from? So now I know Brandon is here in the ATL near me. Brandon, you know, Elise is here. Um, No, I thought she was in New York. No, she is here in Metro Atlanta. Yeah. That's good. Hopefully they'll do a a session or something here. I know. um, Won't that be awesome? Once the pandemic blows over. Mm -hmm. I would love to. I'll show up with my mask if they do it now. Okay, absolutely. So, Savvy, you're in Texas. Mo, where are you? I don't know where you're located. I am in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Where is everybody else? Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. All right. Houston. Okay. Jamaica, Marvin, Toronto, Nadine. Awesome. We are all over. Worldwide. In Georgia. <laughs> that's right. Who else is in Georgia? That's me, Perry. Oh, that's right. Of course. Hey, Perry. Of course, Perry's here. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. I, yeah, Isn't Domo in Georgia, too? He is. South Georgia. Yeah. 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 So I can't oh, wait. All the mass are in Georgia. I see. I see. That's, <laughs> wow, I need to move to Georgia. We got to relocate. We got to relocate. Come on down. Come on down. Yeah, I can't wait till we can all meet and get together. It's going to be epic. No pun intended. Yeah, all the way. Yeah. Cannot wait. All right, y'all. Well, I enjoyed it. We'll be here again next Tuesday. We got um, Mo on Thursday and Savvy on Saturday. So we'll talk to y'all soon. And I know know Ashonda got, got hers on Mondays, too. That's
That's you right. Just, I was just about to yeah. say. He got hers on Mondays too. <laughs> Absolutely. Ashenda and is amazing. Yesterday. Yes, 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 we can't so leave. So we got a lot of content. All right. That's right. So now um Jazz, when she puts, we're having a schedule for the week. So we can see all the classes. Um, there's also a ladies' mindset on I think it's tomorrow on Wednesday. Yeah, on Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow evening. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Nyree, Nyree's here. Hey, yes, Nyree. Honey, I'm here. <laughs> Talk to us about your class. Tell us about it. Oh, so Mindset Wednesdays, even though it's the ladies, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but it really just gets, a, you, you get a chance to get your mind right in the week. You know, you need that check-in. So Mo started us off, Mo and Pittman started us off on Sunday. Awesome. Which was really good. But Wednesday is like a checkup, you know? How's your yeah. week going? What's going on? Where is your headspace at? Awesome, awesome. We can finish out the week. As That's epic right. as possible. All right, y'all. Well, I'm so excited. We have a great team. I love teamwork. All right, y'all. Well, I'll get this recording posted to YouTube. Oh, I see we have North Carolina and yeah, on oh Nari, you're in Canada. I had no idea. Awesome. Yes, I am. Awesome, awesome. All right, y'all. Well, have a great rest of your day. Happy trading, and we'll talk soon. All right, good night, All right. everyone. Have okay. a good one, y'all. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.